Well, uh, fintech startups operating across uh, several sectors in Nigeria raised an estimated $248.6 million, an equivalent of $102.77 billion. From Telema, research shows in 2020, Nigerian startups attracted over half of the $160 million total fintech venture capital funding in Africa, uh, making Nigeria, in Nigeria investors' most uh, preferred destination. Over 100 million Nigerians are either financially underserved or totally excluded. This has led to Nigeria being the fintech hub of Africa, housing five of the seven fintech unicorns of Africa. To begin with, fintech is the short form of financial technology. It involves using new technology to compete with traditional financial methods in delivering financial services. The key areas of fintech include AI, blockchain, cloud computing, and big data. These technologies are used to enhance banking and finance, automate investments, improve risk management, and provide personalized financial services. A unicorn, however, is a private business that has reached the $1 billion valuation mark. Putting these together, we've got fintech unicorns. Fintech companies are growing rapidly worldwide, with significant investments in regions like the Americas, Europe, and Asia Pacific. However, fintech companies face challenges such as regulatory concerns, data security, and potential disruption to established financial institutions. Nigeria has become the leading fintech provider in Africa and attracts the most funding from investors. Since 2021, the number of fintech startups operating in Nigeria has been on the rise, increasing by over 17% to 678. Between 2014 and 2019, Nigerian fintech startups raised more than $600 million, which is 25% of the total funding raised by tech companies in Africa. Nigeria's share in terms of market share is also increasing. It rose by 11% in two years. These are the five Nigerian startups that became billion dollar unicorns. Interswitch. Interswitch was founded in 2002 and reached a billion dollar valuation in 2019. This was after Visa, the debit card company, invested $200 million into the company for a 20% stake. It is the operator of a domestic debit card scheme called Verve. It also operates two online payment services called QuickTeller and Switching and Processing, which is used for card processing. Flutterwave Flutterwave is a payment technology company that allows businesses to accept and process payments across Africa and globally. It integrates various payment methods such as cards, bank accounts, mobile money, and even QR codes. The company, which was founded in 2016, became a unicorn in 2021 after raising $170 million, which raised its value to a billion dollars. Okay. While predominantly being a mobile payment platform, Ope also offers ride hailing, food delivery, and e-commerce ventures. It was launched in 2018 by Opera, the famous browser company. Following Flutterwave, Ope achieved unicorn status barely eight months after Flutterwave after raising $400 million from investors in China. This investment raised the valuation of Ope to $2 billion. Jumia. Jumia is often called the Amazon of Africa. In 2016, Jumia became the first unicorn in 2016 and was listed on the New York Stock Exchange just three years later. This was after Jumia raised $326 million in funds from AXA insurance company, Goldman Sachs and MTN. Jumia is great because it built the African online marketplace from scratch and developed its own payment platform, Andela. Andela is a talent marketplace. It provides software engineers from Africa with global companies. It provides training, mentorship, and support for its engineers while matching them with remote jobs. Andela was founded in 2014, and after seven years of existence, it achieved unicorn status when it raised $200 million, pushing its valuation to the tune of $1.5 billion. Many reasons can motivate someone to operate a fintech company, 
in Nigeria. The fintech ecosystem in Nigeria has received a lot of investment and support from many stakeholders, leading to the creation of five unicorns. Nigeria has a very large market for these companies due to its high population. With a GDP of $2,229 per capita, Nigeria has a large and growing middle class, which creates a huge demand for financial services, especially among the tech-savvy population. Nigeria is one of seven countries that contribute half of the world's unbanked. 118 million Nigerians do not have bank accounts, meaning that 40% of the population is unbanked and does not have access to these kinds of easy financial services. This problem was observed by various companies and they seized the opportunity to provide these services to the people, making it a lucrative business initiative. Nigeria has the highest mobile penetration in Africa with more than 184 million active mobile subscribers and a penetration rate of 96% while 61% of Nigerians have access to the internet. This is one of the major requirements for people to be able to use the services of these fintech companies which makes Nigeria the best place for them to thrive. In three years, the Nigerian startup scene realized $1.8 billion from various international investors such as MasterCard, Visa and Tencent. The regulatory bodies in Nigeria have also played a key role in the growth of the fintech sector. For example, the Central Bank of Nigeria has put in place many regulations to favor the operation of these companies in the country such as the Regulatory Sandbox Initiative. The impact the fintech sector has had on the Nigerian economy for the last few years is overwhelming. Fintech companies have contributed to the Nigerian economy by creating new products stemming from innovation and new markets that provide easily accessible solutions to the problems their customers face. For example, InterSwitch was the first to begin electronic payments and enable interoperability among banks, sellers and customers. Jumia, Africa's most famous shopping app used by millions now has a valuation of over $4 billion and connects buyers with sellers on the whole African continent. You can't skip the fact that fintech has brought in a lot of jobs for the Nigerian youth. Employment opportunities have been created by these fintech companies either directly or indirectly. Ope says they have created more than 300,000 jobs for delivery agents, food vendors and motorcycle riders through the services they provide. Fintech companies have even influenced the regulation and infrastructure of the Nigerian financial sector through engagements with the stakeholders to foster innovation and competition. Now, companies are allowed to test their products and fine-tune them before the final release of the products, data centers, network connectivity and other sophisticated infrastructure run by fintechs improve the level of infrastructure. For example, InterSwitch owns one of the largest data centers in West Africa, where they host their systems as well as those of other companies. Investment opportunities in Nigerian fintech startups are abundant and diverse. Nigeria is a very suitable place to invest in savings and loans for fintech startups. This sector has seen significant growth through companies like Paystack. Investors can also explore the remittances sector, which has also seen much growth. However, the insert tech sector has not seen much activity, but is a high potential growth venture to offer micro and on-demand insurance. Venturing into these businesses, many challenges need to be addressed to increase the growth and explore the full potential of the Nigerian fintech industry. Compared to quarter one of 2019, the funding received by the sector in the same period in 2020 dropped by 56%. This is because of the declining dollar rate and the global economic turndown during the time of the pandemic. This has made investors very careful as to where exactly they choose to spend their money. As fintech regulation in Nigeria is still evolving, sometimes there are unclear or inconsistent regulations by the regulatory bodies. 
fintech startups have to go through the central bank, the SEC, and many other government organizations where every institution always seems to have different mandates and requirements. This, coupled with the failure of these regulators to keep pace with the fast-moving fintech industry, is costing the sector in Nigeria. For example, the central bank quickly moved from advising customers to avoid transacting business using virtual currencies like Bitcoin to totally shutting down any accounts that traded with these currencies. Sheer ignorance on the part of the people, fraud and illiteracy are also huge stumbling blocks in the way of creating more fintech unicorns in Nigeria. The Nigerian fintech space is very promising only if the stakeholders keep doing what is good for the industry to succeed. If all things are put in order, Nigerian fintech will attract a lot more investment and funding, creating more unicorns and leading to more competition. The impact fintech can have on the Nigerian economy is more profound than we think. From creating many jobs to putting Nigeria along with big industry players like Amazon. Do you think this is possible? Where do you see Nigerian fintech in the next 5 to 10 years? Let us know in the comments.